I immediately knew something was off when I woke up the next morning and didn't even realize I had been sleeping. Even after a heavy night of drinking, I would usually stir and wake up a few times, but this was different. V was still out like a light, which was good, as I didn't want her to see me trembling. Everything felt heightened, and even though I didn't remember dreaming, I could see their faces every time I closed my eyes. Their laughter echoed in my ears as if they were in the room with us. But the worst thing was that I actually felt them. How had V become so attached to this? I rose as quietly as I could and went to the kitchen to turn on the coffee maker. I huffed in frustration. This thing took forever to brew. If we could ever get our asses out of poverty, this would be the first thing we replaced. Shit, you got a tight ass. I tried to distract myself on my hollow while I waited. Setting a schedule for the week ahead was something I used to do before the studio had come about. Perhaps that would be a good way to bring some much-needed focus to my life. But as I stared at my screen, I realized I had nothing to plan for. You almost finished fucking her yet? Shit, what I gotta do to get a crack at her? Make an appointment? I dropped my hollow and slapped my palms over my ears, desperately trying to stop the voices. What was the point of getting a good night's sleep if my nightmares would be here to greet me when I woke up? Hell, this was worse than a nightmare. I looked longingly toward the cupboard. Fuck it. I'd already proven I could control myself and the goal had never been to go completely sober. Just to cut back to a healthy level, that was all. And it had been a long time since I'd had a cheat day anyway. The bottle was heavy and I was careful to take it out without knocking it against anything. After checking to make sure V was still asleep, I raised it to my lips and tilted it back. It was shameful. Vodka demanded to be drunk from a glass. But this was purely medicinal, and I didn't want to risk waking up V by washing out a glass. Fuck that, her mouth's already full of cum. I ain't sticking my dick in it until she's washed it out. Come on, move out of the way. I want to see about this tight ass of hers. Another mouthful quickly followed. There was no reason to be enjoying this, however, and after a final swallow, I put the cap back on and carefully set the bottle back in the cupboard. I was breathing fire, but things were finally growing quieter just as the last of the coffee settled into the carafe. Perfect timing. I poured myself a cup and sat down on the couch. My wreath was still on the table where I'd left it last night. Diving back into the space BD sounded like a perfect way to start the morning, but I felt the pang of disappointment when I realized I had forgotten to turn it off. The battery had completely drained overnight, and while it wouldn't take long to charge, Sweet Dreams models usually only took an hour. My hopes for a relaxing morning were shot. Instead, I turned on the projector. I hated having to turn the subtitles on, but it was necessary so V wouldn't be woken by the epic battle taking place between the vampires and the frog brothers. I still couldn't understand why she loved this movie so much, but at least now I could chalk it off the list and say we'd both seen it. V lumbered out of the bedroom just as the end credits were rolling. Morning. Morning. You finished the movie? V asked as she poured herself some coffee. Yep. Was bored. What did you think? It was Nova, I lied with a big grin. I'm thinking the Frog Brothers are going to be my personal heroes from here on out. V laughed and sat next to me. She carefully held her cup in one hand while pulling the blanket over her lap with the other. Thought I was your hero. Still are, just not when it comes to vampires. Her smile faltered when she glanced back at the kitchen. Some hero I turned out to be. I had to have my girl literally pick me up off the floor last night. I didn't know why she was beating herself up like this. It wasn't like she'd relapsed. I had told her to take one, and that had only been after someone with real medical experience had advised me to do it. V. No. V slammed her coffee down on the table with such force I was afraid she would break her mug. I watched as V stormed into the kitchen and swiped the prescription bottle off the counter before turning back to face me. For a horrifying moment, I thought she was going to pocket them and run off. Instead, she held them up. I know you thought what you were doing last night was the right thing, and maybe it was, but I never should have put you in that position, Judy. V, you couldn't help it. Like you said, you were literally laying on the floor. And I was only like that because I was weak. Yeah, I had a bad night, and I got some bumps and scrapes to show for it. But for fuck's sake, you deserve better than this. I wasn't comfortable with where the conversation was headed. 
I knew her well enough to know she would continue beating herself up until she was battered and bruised on the inside as well, and I didn't want her doing that, even if there was a small part of me that was angry at her for some reason. She didn't deserve that. Being overwhelmed by your cravings isn't weak, V. What was weak was you keeping this from me for a year while you bled us dry. I stepped closer when she flinched in pain at my words, not saying this to hurt you. I'm trying to make you realize how far you've come. V shook her head. I don't feel like I've done a single thing right. V, I took her cheeks into my hand so she was forced to look at me. Last night, you asked me for help. You did the right thing by doing that, and I did the right thing by checking to make sure it was okay. We did the right thing. I'm proud of you. I was starting to get through to her, and for good reason. She had suffered over the last two weeks because I hadn't seen the toll her withdrawal was taking upon her. I'd been too caught up in my own shit to notice. And it wasn't lost on me that escapism had been my sole goal last night when I'd slipped that pill. Who was really the weak one? Something flashed behind her eyes, and a hint of a smile tugged at her lips. Not yet, you ain't. What do you mean? Her smile grew as she strode back into the kitchen. With the flick of her wrist, she pitched the bottle into the trash and turned back to face me. Now you can be proud of me. Shit, V. Gotta say, I'm kinda speechless right now. Then I'll do the talking. I know you've been propping me up, and I can't imagine it's been much fun for you. But I want you to know how much I appreciate it, how much you've helped me. V walked toward the window and crossed her arms. I wasn't sure what to do with myself as she looked out at the city. This place has a bad way of changing people into something they shouldn't be. I used to look at it and dream about living the preem life. Lots of guns, lots of eddies, lots of women. Quality, not quantity, V. I winked. V chuckled and turned to face me. Her eyes were clear, almost as if a fog I hadn't realized had been there had lifted. I turned into something I'd never thought I'd become. An addict and a liar. She shook her head shamefully. But I'm done with all of that now. I want you to promise me something. Shit. Whatever she was about to ask me to promise her had to be serious as she held out her hand to me. My heart fluttered as I took a nervous step forward and linked our fingers together. Oh, what is it? Promise me you won't change who you are. What? What do you mean? V smiled and squeezed my hand. There was a reverence in her gaze. She didn't realize how misplaced it was. You're too good for this city, and I see it wearing down on you day after day. Lately, I don't know, I guess I just miss seeing that jump in your step like you had when we first met. That spark we had. I wanted V to shut up and to stop driving the knife even further into my heart. Kicking the pills had been more than enough, but now she wanted to turn over a whole new leaf between us. She was seeing things much more clearly now, and it terrified me. So... Will you promise me not to change, and I'll promise you I will change. And who knows, maybe we'll find our old selves somewhere in the middle of it all. V, I was raped, and there's so much more about me you don't know. The old Judy is gone. I, I can't be that person ever again. The words were dancing on the tip of my tongue, begging for release. I faced an impossible choice. I could tell V the truth and crush her spirit completely, or I could lie and cement the deception between us for however long it would hold. What had I done? I promise, V. And I promise you too. Come here. V pulled me into a passionate kiss, one devoid of her usual sexual energy. This was how love was expressed. Sadly, we didn't have much time to celebrate our newfound fresh start since V had to run out for a gig. I wasn't pleased she was going back out there again so soon after she'd nearly had her own brush with rape, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. As I sat alone in our apartment, I pondered the questions rattling around in my brain. Was this my fault? Did all of our problems stem from my own actions? Was I putting her back in danger out of some vain hope we might rediscover ourselves? 
I wanted to cry. Nothing I did seemed to make sense anymore, and now I was the one, not V, who'd built a house of cards for us to live in. I rose from the couch and went to the kitchen to escape the walls of lies surrounding me, but I kept looking at the cupboard, knowing there was yet another lie waiting for me inside. I snapped my eyes away, and they settled on the trash can. If lies were all I had left, I could at least make sure I didn't lose those too. I swapped the prescription bottle out of the trash and stuffed it into my pocket, just in case. <laughs>